The Belgae were a group of tribes living in northern Gaul, on the west bank of the Rhine, from at least the 3rd century BC. They gave their name to the Roman province of Gallia Belgica, and very much later to the modern country of Belgium. From 500 BC, Celtic tribes settled in the region of present-day Belgium, and traded with the Mediterranean world. The Roman influence penetrated in these areas about 150 BC, when the first coins came into use. Julius Caesar describes Gaul at the time of his conquest, between 58 to 51 BC, as divided into three parts, a part inhabited by the Aquitani in the southwest, the Gauls of the biggest central part, and the Belgi in the north. Each of these three parts was different in terms of customs, laws, and language. Caesar said about the Belgi that they were the bravest because they are farthest from the civilization and refinement of our province, and mercants least frequently resort to them and import those things which tend to effeminate the mind, and they are the nearest to the Germans, who dwell beyond the Rhine with whom they are continually waging war. For a long time, the Belgi were considered to be Gallic people, or a Germanic people dominated by a Gallic aristocracy. Hypothesis suggested by the fact that the names of the Belgi chiefs are of Celtic origin, as well as ancient and non-Germanic toponyms. More precise analyses of the names of the tribes, their chiefs and their gods lead to these various assumptions. Some tribes would be genuinely Gallic, such as the Remi, the Belovach, the Morini or the Atribates. Others would show Germanic features, Nervi, Aduatuc, Condrusi, Menapi, Treveri, according to Caesar. Caesar reported that the more northerly allies of the Belgi, from west to east, the Menapi, Nervi and Germanicis Renani were less economically developed and more warlike, similar to the Germani east of the Rhine river. The Menapi and the northern Germani lived among loft thorny forests, islands and swamps, and the central Belgian Nervi lands were deliberately planted with thick hedges in order to be impenetrable to cavalry. During the late 2nd or early 1st century BC, a small group of Belgi crossed to Britain. After further Gallic victories by Caesar, other settlers took refuge across the Channel, and Belgic culture spread to most of lowland Britain. The three most important Belgic kingdoms, identified by their coinage, were centred at Colchester, St. Albans and Silchester. The chief Belgic contribution to southern Britain was the introduction of the heavy plough, which was used to clear many lands previously untillable. Caesar writes that the Belgi were conspiring and arming themselves in response to his earlier conquests. To counter this threat, he raised two new legions and ordered his Gallic allies, the Aedui, to invade the territory of the Belovage the largest and fiercest of the Belgi tribes, in 57 BC. Cautious of the numbers and bravery of the Belgi, Caesar initially avoided a pitched battle, resorting mainly to cavalry skirmishes to prove their strengths and weaknesses. Once he was satisfied his troops were a match for them, he made camp on a low hill protected by a marsh at the front and the river Aid behind, near Bibrax between modern Laon and Reims, in the territory of the Remi. The Belgi attacked over the river, but were repulsed after a fierce battle. Realizing they could not dislodge the Romans, and aware of the approach of the Aedui into the lands of the Belovage, the Belgi decided to disband their combined force and return to their own lands. Caesar's informants advised him that whichever tribe he would attack first, the others would come to their defense. At daybreak, Caesar sent his cavalry to harass the rear guard of the Belgi, killing many of them. Caesar next marched into the territory of the Susonis and besieged the town of Noviodunum. Seeing the Roman siege engines, the Susonis surrendered, whereupon Caesar turned his attention to the Belovach, 
who had retreated into the fortress of Bratus Pantheon, between modern Amiens and Bilvai. They quickly surrendered, as did the Ambiani. The Nervi, along with the Atrebates and the Viromandui, decided to fight. They hid in the forests and attacked the approaching Roman column at the river Savis. Their quick and unexpected attack left the Romans exposed. However, Caesar grabbed the shield, made his way to the front line and quickly organized his forces. The two Roman legions guarding the baggage train at the rear finally arrived and helped turn the tide of the battle. Caesar says that Nervi were almost annihilated in the battle and is effusive in his tribute to their bravery, calling them heroes. The Atuatuch, who were marching to their aid, turned back on hearing of the defeat and retreated to one stronghold, were put under siege and soon surrendered and handed over their arms. However, the surrender was a ploy and the Atuatuch, armed with weapons they had hidden, tried to break out during the night. The Romans had the advantage of position and killed 4,000. The rest, about 53,000, were sold into slavery. In 53 BC, the Eburons, led by Ambiorix, along with the Nervi, Menapi and Morini, revolted again and wiped out 15 cohorts, only to be put down by Caesar. The following year, Belgi fought again in the uprising of Vercingetorix. After their final subjugation, Caesar combined the three parts of Gaul, the territory of the Belgi, Celti and Aquitani into a single province, Gallia Comata, or Long-Haired Gaul.